Good morning, everyone, and yeah, thanks for the uh, for the opportunity to share the foodie story. Uh, I guess many of you will uh, will know our retail brands probably a lot better than you know uh, the cooperative behind them. So as Andrew said, I'm just going to spend maybe five or ten minutes just uh, giving a, b a bit of a scene setter, and then uh, Andrew will hoe into a few questions. So I guess back in, in 1922, uh, four grocers got together and did a pretty smart thing when they formed a buying club. And they basically did that to get better pricing for themselves and, uh, and for their customers. And for 90 years, uh, our predecessors and our colleagues continued that smart thinking. They stayed entrepreneurial to the core, and they remained at the forefront of grocery uh, in, in this country. Originally, there were four separate cooperatives, which then became three. And 18 months ago, Foodstuffs North Island was formed out of the merger of uh, Foodstuffs Auckland and Wellington. Now, you'll know us through our 359 supermarkets, as well as the Liquorland and, uh, and Gilmore's brands. So during these 90 years, Foodstuffs Auckland uh, excelled through uh, a really uh, intense focus on the art of retailing, but with scant regard for the science. We celebrated our parsimonious IT spend, and we operated with the IP in the heads of some very clever, loyal, and entrepreneurial people who were incredibly good at coming up with workarounds. So something radical was required, and uh, I was fortunate enough, I guess, when I joined Foodstuffs three years ago, that the, the desire and the need for change had already been understood. SAP had been selected as a platform for change, but we were absolutely not set up for success. We were about to commence the biggest, longest, most expensive, and therefore riskiest activity in the history of Foodstuffs, and we were going to roll that out on some pretty flaky foundations. So in 2012, we took the leap, not just to transform the business, but to fix the foundations as well. We called it Program Lightning, and we would set out to literally transform every part of our business to create one consistent way of working across a cooperative with reliable and consistent information and a new retail platform to support the growth into the future in what was becoming a rapidly evolving world. So even by foodstuff scales, this, this was large. This was by far the biggest thing that we'd ever done in our history. It was so large, it even had its own logo. And it involved probably 130 people full time. But the entire business was involved as we set about looking at and reinventing every process involved in selling stuff to our customers. By the end of it, we will have spent $150 million. And we've also had a heavy reliance on some external partners. And key to that uh, partner strategy was making sure that we got ownership and commitment from the very, very highest levels of SAP in Germany. And we actually went about a very different approach to blueprinting when we got into the project. And most importantly, it was also about capturing the hearts and minds of our own people and helping them to understand that, yes, we're a cooperative, yes, we're special, but actually, we're still a grocery store, and we really can run our business using standard software. But first, we had to fix the foundations. And it was important that we had the foundations in before we tried to roll out a transformation of this level. Perhaps the cement wasn't dry yet, but at least it was out before we started building on top. So two new data centers, replacing the entire network across the wider network and all of our store networks, complete replatforming of databases, storage, compute capability, new desktop environment, but also, far more importantly, the people, processes, and tools and maturing the IT department that would actually be able to operate in this new environment. The preparation was massive, and that was as much about the business preparation as the technology preparation. SAP works really, really well if you follow the rules, and following the rules is not something that a bunch of entrepreneurial grocers and a cooperative do very well. So the first thing we had to do was run a, a complete business readiness program going around every single store, really giving them a spit and polish, making sure they were running their processes properly, and really preparing the people to understand the wave of change that was about to engulf them. We then had to do a similar thing around technical readiness. Again, these owners had, had run their stores pretty much however they wanted. So we had to go out and just get all the basics right, new network, wireless, UPS, desktop, st store servers, but also some of the other things that SAP is pretty unforgiving in around uh, identity and access management, getting rid of all those generic user IDs and, and all sorts of cultural challenges in the way the owners had run their stores for so long. 
After that, we went in and replaced the point of sale again, going around every stores, and we made a conscious choice to integrate, interface that back to our existing legacy systems. And that was all about, although it was a two-stage deployment, it was all about de-risking the ultimate cutover to SAP, which was when all the, the fundamental process change would happen. And then after our pilot stores, we spent a little bit of time learning the lessons, building up uh, what we needed to do before we were ready for a mass deployment, building the deployment team, uh, and then looking at ways we could accelerate that, um, that deployment process, which given the, the massive amount of process change for every store owner, there was no option other than for that to be a store-by-store -store, uh, deployment where we go into every store for 12 weeks, we train, we work with the store, we cut them over and, and we move on. Obviously we've got those running in parallel, but it's, it's a very hands-on intensive process. Now SAP brings a certain amount of discipline, um, and German software uh, company meets Kiwi Grocer is quite an unlikely cultural alignment, and not one without challenges. We wanted the standard way of working. We wanted the standard approach to software, but we didn't want to lose any of the entrepreneurship. We didn't want to lose our ability to take risks, and we didn't want our people to think that we were slowing them down. In fact, what our aim was to provide them rapid and rich access to data and information to give them freedom to make more decisions and to be more creative in their stores. But then when things were going really well and we just about had that under control, along came a merger. Suddenly, we had twice as many legacy systems to integrate. We had a company that had roughly doubled in size. We had a lightning project that had doubled in size. Uh, of course, we had a new board, we had new execs, we had new expectations, and we had an organisation that was distracted. Having done all this great work to get everybody lined up and prioritised, we now had people changing roles, people worrying about their futures, people thinking about different things. So all of our carefully and beautifully planned uh, OCM work uh, was at risk of exploding. But the story does have a happy ending. Uh, we got through all of that. We've uh, well and truly landed. The program is now in a full deployment mode, rolling out around the stores. Uh, we're preparing to extend that to the Lower North Island stores, following on from the merger. And we're starting to build insight and innovation on this new platform.